Welcome to the Personal Development Mastery Podcast. Stand out, don't fit in. Welcome to the Personal Development Mastery Podcast. Today I have the, the real pleasure to be speaking with an extraordinary lady uh, who was made in Brazil with UK parts. <laughs> She's officially certified Wim Hof uh, Method Instructor and uh, the only female level 2 instructor in the UK. Emma Estrella, welcome to the show. It's a real pleasure to speak with you uh, for the second time for the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. It's uh, an honor to be invited back. It's always, always a good thing. <laughs> it's great. It's great to have you. And uh, Emma, I wanted to start uh, just by some kind of background. You say that your life has been a, a journey of uncovering your true uh, identity. So can you give us one or two maybe key defining key defining moments in that uh, journey of uh, self exploration yeah sure i think um so five years ago i think now i had a burnout in in life and it was just everything seemed to be unbalanced at the time and just uh, allowed me to address uh sort of like a new way because if i was really honest the the way that i was living i probably wasn't very happy so Um, it wasn't the, the best time to have a burnout. It never is. Um, so, but it did. <laughs> it did. Uh, yeah, it did kind of reinforce what I think what the word success meant to me, and it wasn't the, the way that I was going down. So, um, so yeah, it was a big wake up call. Uh, and what I didn't realize, I suppose, at the time, that things I, things were happening for me. I think things were happening to me. So that was, the, I think, that was the biggest. The biggest thing and when you make that switch you believe that uh, there's a, a life lesson in, in everything so and that journey was very hard was very hard like admitting some home truths is never very nice uh, yeah. it's never very nice at all so I think I did a lot of shadow shadow work or just a lot of but it was a, a different spin so I wasn't going down into depression at all it was just more enlightenment having admitting your faults or going into the skeleton of the closet and going, yeah, I own it. This is me. Um, so when I mentioned my identity, um, I don't know, it's no secret that I am adopted. So I was adopted um, in Brazil. And then my English parents, which I call my parents because they're the only ones I know, mm -hmm. um, came over to England. And so I was educated, brought up here and brought up by English um, family. So I think when I use my identity, A lot of it came from that, that I didn't, although I was brought up in a, a lovely, loving environment, I still had that itchy feeling of like, who am I? Where am I mm. from? Mm. And I don't think that ever leaves an adoptee um, point of view. So my journey was very much discovering who am I? Um, and what, and kind of what it's entailed now, it's not necessarily in the physical form. It doesn't matter that I don't know my parents. Um, it's more the fact that it, I know who I am. And, it, and it's been a real, real journey um, up and down just to get that realization that I'm enough and I'm whole without yeah. needing to know uh, these biological sort of traits or terms and things like that. So, so yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I mean about my identity. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, you came across the Wim Hof method uh, at some point. Uh, I think you told me while you're listening to a podcast. Yeah. That's right. Uh, happily, yeah. yeah. Rich Roll, uh, Rich Roll podcast. I was listening to him, and he interviewed Wim. I think it was June or something like that. June, August, 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, and I heard Wim for the first time, and his story really resonated with me. Um, mm -hmm. His background story, as I, I, I always openly say, I had heard of the Ice Man before and breaking all these world records, but they didn't mean anything to me. I was like, why would you want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy. Um, but it was his story and the reason why he went to that uh, place. I was like, oh, right, I get it. Because at that time, I was also going into nature, albeit not as advanced as he was, mm -hmm. um, or in depth or deep. Uh, but I was also kind of finding my answers in nature as well. So when he just said, go into cold water I was wearing a wetsuit at the time doing swimming and I just thought yeah maybe maybe I can do this and oh my god it was it was a, a real experience to to do to do that and uh, I suppose I haven't looked back since it's um, freedom beyond that fear mm -hmm. for sure 
<laughs> so how, how has uh, the Wim Hof method changed you as, uh, as a person? I yeah, know it's a big, I mean, big question. <laughs> it is a big question. And interesting you say that right now before before everything that's sort of happening. Um, I spoke to to Wim about it and when I went to Poland. And no one really knows my testimonial um from the Wim Hof point of view. And I was gonna come out and do a few a few YouTube videos on it. But I said to Wim that for me, Wim Hof method has helped me release trauma. And I don't know if many people associate the Wim Hof method with trauma release, because there's other different types of breath work for that. But it really has helped me go back to the pre-verbal trauma that I that I had and I didn't know I was carrying. So the Wim Hof has allowed me to my body to release that at that time back then without reliving the negative loop. Obviously, I didn't know. So it, for me, it was very innate and primal. So my theory is um, when I was born, it's stressful enough for a baby to be born um, naturally. So. Uh, But I believe I had my mother's fear as well because she knew that she was going to um, give me up or mm -hmm. adopt. Um, mm -hmm. But I had her cortisol come through the umbilical cord as well as my own stress and fears of going um, coming into this world. That I was born definitely in fight or flight and adrenal overload. And the first couple of years, I couldn't communicate that. So I was put into a new, a new environment, a new smells, new language, new, new everything. That I wasn't familiar because all I'd known is womb life, if you like, for nine months. So all that uh, I had to really reprogram or just have that kind of early, I trust, you know, I'm getting fed, I'm getting watered. They were, didn't have any anything, you know, taken away from that point of view. But innately, it was distrust or something that didn't, didn't marry up. And with the Wim Hof method, because you really do exercise between the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system, you you... And you get familiar with that feeling. Um, I do believe that the couple of breathworks that I've had, I've been brought back to the womb and just about to be born and mm. realizing that the cortisol and the adrenaline wasn't mine. And it was just like, oh, it's allowed me to be freer and open up in my body. And it was very moving, actually, to, to know that because uh, I had, had no clue um, until that happened. And I was like, wow, I I, I really felt that connection with my birth mum, but also that kind of release that that I believe happened and I don't need to carry it along anymore. So I think since then I started to sleep better at night. Mm. <laughs> um, not I always slept well, but I sleep more relaxed now because when I mean, I'm in bed, I, my shoulders come up and things like that. But now they're like, oh, okay, I'm feeling a lot, a lot less sort of deep tension that I've been released, so... Um, so yeah, I spoke to women. I, it really is a trauma release um, without knowing um, about that, just because you become very in tune with your body, um, with the breath work and how you're feeling. So hmm. Fascinating. First, yeah, at first, <laughs> we <laughs> to openly speak about it. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so and now it's, um, so now I want to specialize and sort of really um, do more niche from the Wim Hof method and sort of more concentrate on what I know, my story, which is um, early life trauma, early life trauma release, yeah. So you think you can uh, help others uh, th with using the Wim Hof method to release their own uh, childhood uh, traumas? Yeah, yeah. So I've been working with adoptees um, around the world and doing, um, so it's very similar to the Wim Hof, obviously, There is some innate feeling or some feeling and some key things that I know as an adoptee mm -hmm. what it's like. So I really sort of try and home into that kind of feeling of going into the emptiness or the hollowness that some adoptees can have. And not just adoptees, there's many sort of early life trauma. Um, but it's that it's that inner core that feels the hollow and no one else can feel it apart from you. So it was just very much encouraging that that you can feel that yourself. So I think sort of going more into that whilst doing the breath work. Mm. Yeah. Emma, did that release happen uh, in a moment or did it happen over a long period of time? It happened in the moment because I, I right. really, really didn't know that that was a thing. Um, yeah, because the rational part of my mind was like, yeah, I'm adopted and I'm okay about it. But the body was doesn't lie. You know, it was it was sort of trickling out of me. With, but there, it was just that one powerful breath work that I felt my mum's heartbeat and it was faster than mine and I and then I was like whoa it's the the connection that I had is like she 
she knew about it but didn't want it or lived in fear and that whole kind of I'm giving giving birth to a child that I'll never see mm. and uh, or whatever or I, I give her the best birth and she can live her best life but there's a disconnection there whatever it was I don't know the emotional attachment to it I can only but the physicalness that it I was definitely born with more fight or flight um and it wasn't my own so yeah wow yeah. <laughs> Right, so let's take a step back then now, because we have been talking about the Wim Hof method and uh, for someone who doesn't know what the Wim Hof method is, uh, how would you describe it in a nutshell? Yeah, sure. So the Wim Hof method is comprised of three pillars, uh, breathing, uh, breath work, and it's very interesting, uh, the breath work. Uh, I think it's um, unique because it has so much going on in that one cycle um, at all that one cycle so you've got the retention period and you've got the the building up of diaphragmatic mm-hmm. calm breathing so for me it's really really interesting and it can um, unlock so much in your in your life um, for health benefits and, and things like that as well as the emotional and sort of nice release which we've just talked about there's a cold exposure so the cold exposure is beautiful um when you get when you get used to it and everything like that so it doesn't have to be um an ice bath which i, I suppose the Wim Hof method is famous for everyone getting into ice baths mm-hmm. cold exposure could mean so much more but it's just about waking up your body and the cells in your body um, that it's capable of really but we just live too comfortably now um and then the third pillar is the commitment side the commitment is open to interpretation the commitment could be the commitment to doing the Wim Hof method, or it could be the commitment and mindset of what you need to to go into the ice water or the breathing. Um, so it's a very nice open, or the commitment could be the mastery of the Wim Hof method and getting to know a deeper level of, of yourself and how you respond to different things. So um, it's it's a I, it's a beautiful. I say the beautiful part is the, uh, the commitment side uh, of it because it's you make it yours and, and whatever you need for it to be in your life throughout the rest of your life. So mm. however you want to interpret it, that. I like the word mastery that you used. It's, uh, <laughs> it's very appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, tell me, let's talk about the cold exposure then. Uh, why would someone do uh, ice baths or cold showers or uh, swim into the, la- the lakes as you do in the middle of the winter? Um, I think for me, it's been a it's been a great journey. That initially, obviously, I wasn't very comfortable. I always thought, I'm born in Brazil, you know, hot country. I'm not designed for the cold, so <laughs> very much resisting resisting the cold. But I think uh, when you explore, because um, I was in I was in the time that was happening to me, I was questioning everything. You know, everything uh, I was questioning, even my friendships, and um, with uh, with some with some people. It's just uh, yeah, I was questioning everything. So it was. It came at when I was curious to find another way. So, um, so for me, I like the fact that it wasn't seen to be uh, normal, if you like. Um, probably still isn't now, but it is very much in my life. So, I was curious to to do something that was pushing my boundaries, my limiting beliefs, and um, just to see how I would feel again. Because uh, I think the reason for my sort of imbalance um through my burnout was because i was living quite disconnected mm-hmm. so when i heard wim on the podcast saying you need to connect back to yourself and it's a great opportunity to do this now when everyone is sort of in quarantine if you like or not mm-hmm. now, that it is an opportunity to explore how you respond and what makes you tick and are you happy is this really what you wanted and it's and so back then i was sort of asking myself those questions and the way to find out about yourself, you sort of learn from the uncomfortableness. So I was really up for trying to push myself into a place that didn't seem good in mm-hmm. order to see how I would be. Um, and the more that I did it, the more it's quite addictive because you feel so amazing and so good after it. And you're almost, it's a really good lesson that you definitely overthink it. Well, I did anyway. And then when I came out, I was like, what was I ever worrying about? Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So, and and that's a really nice skill or a nice switch of the or a new pathway of thinking in 
transferable in life if there's something that you don't want to do you kind of just why do I not want to do it and sort of what's what's the trigger in me am I overthinking it or just do it anyway and then when you do you're like I'm so glad so it's it's very much it's a lovely sort of um you can learn so much from the cold it is not for me now I think it's not about the cold it, the cold can give you so much more than just that feeling of ah, I'm, in a, I'm in, a, in a cold place so I would encourage anyone to explore um by going it doesn't have to be the whole body or anything like that but just find out give yourself that favor and find out about what makes you tick yeah Awesome. And sharing my own experience, having been doing uh, cold showers for close to two years now, uh, what you said about getting out of the comfort zone and really forcing your will over your mind who wants to not do it. Because it's I never turn it to cold and say I'm looking forward to it. It's always there is some resistance in my mind. Maybe maybe today I can skip it and start again tomorrow. There's always that voice. But once the water hits me, <laughs> that uh, is a big win against my uh, my mind going, trying to keep me on my comfort zone, on my safety. And of course, I, f- I feel awesome afterwards. It's uh, And the internal dialogue stops. So these are obvious benefits for me. And apart from that, I know that there are benefits of uh, improved immune system, which uh, I believe, especially now with the coronavirus, it's the really the only defense that we have against the virus is a good immune system. And yes, to wash our hands and uh, keep some distance from other pe- people, uh, yeah. but uh, our immunity, which is uh, very important. Definitely. And um, with the Wim Hof, method it's innate immunity so it's the real immunity which apparently it wasn't affecting young young people because they naturally have it mm. um, as we get older we get too comfortable in a comfortable conditioned room everything like that we, we live in more fear um so yeah and fear based sort of decreases your immunity so with the wim hof method facing the fear and doing anyway is is beautiful and um and with the cold, it does allow the flexibility of, of the capability of the body. So you are strengthening your immune system by going into the cold. Absolutely. So, yeah. And I think it's just about taking back that power mentally and physically, you know, mm-hmm. you and you can do it. We are designed that we can do it, not to stay there permanently, but to visit. And it becomes a happy stressor. So you are, yeah, absolutely. And we do need to get out of our uh, what is comfortable because we many people live a life of comfort completely. I mean, physical comfort. Uh, it's never too cold, never too hot, uh, never too hungry, never too thirsty. And there is, and uh, I believe that the human body is, was not designed to live in that uh, averageness uh, all the time. Totally, and, and I think until my sort of um, burnout five years ago. I wasn't aware of any of that. Mm. I was just living like a, like a programmed person. You know, there's always my, there's always plentiful food. There's always plenty of choice. Um, I always preferred a warm room, but I didn't know why. Um, mm. So I think it wasn't until then that, as I said, when you start questioning everything, and you sort of visit the, the stresses now in life, um, you become aware. And awareness is beautiful uh, because then you can start to heal or start to address it. So it was it was really nice to like oh well, why don't you go in the cold well, oh that's I don't know why not but it, it, just those things were just making me aware of it so I was like okay I will you know now but I never knew that before mm. you know I never knew that I had so much choice on my te- on my food I never knew that I was driving to work and I could have cycled I never knew you know all these things but when they come to your attention or your awareness like the breath you breathe automatically but then you can also influence it by conscious breathing suddenly you're like wow it opens up so many possibilities mm-hmm. yeah. amazing you know there are many things that i want to ask you based on what you just said so <laughs> i will uh, i want to, to talk about the breathing a little bit later before that i want to uh, because we mentioned the, the immunity and the, the coronavirus and you said something earlier about that phrase that has been heard so much uh, about social distancing, which yeah. you think that... Uh, so t- tell, tell me again what you said, because I really, 
I think you are absolutely right. Oh, about. yeah, thank you. I feel it, when I first um, heard about the coronavirus and social distancing, I got really upset and I was crying a couple of times and I was like, why am I crying? Um, it's because of the word social distancing. Um, I don't like it and, and I, I remain neutral on my social media, so I'm not going to go, I don't like social distancing. But it has really affected my heart, like it really has, because... At the end of the day, social distancing, allowing people to be rude or to look at you as if you've got five heads and they want to avoid you and things like that. And it's actually just physical distancing. And that is it. Physical distance of two metres or, or whatever the thing is. And I think I think the media have played a really bad card there because social distancing is enforcing a whole different mindset of fear and and keyboard warriors but in a physical way now mm -hmm. and, and things like that and, and I'm not enjoying I'm not enjoying that word um, at all it is just physical and so you should have a bigger smile on your face two meters away and a bigger kind of okay you know and and I see that um, occasionally in the local communities but I, I don't see it enough um, mm. like when I was at the shop um, I said to the woman and how are you, how are you in all this and she's like you know, you're the first person that's asked me that in days. Mm. I felt so sad that that, that is the case, you know, because everyone's got the social distancing thing in their head and they're getting programmed to a uh, different belief system. But it is just physical distance. Yeah. And that's the one thing I miss is is the connectiveness of, of a physical um, side of it. And it, and it is just because the body doesn't lie again. So you can be open, warm happy, honest, relaxed, and be two meters apart. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There is indeed uh, lots of uh, fear spreading, unfortunately, from the news and from many sources and negativity, which uh, is, in a way it spreads faster than the virus and could damage people much more because, again, it lowers the immunity if, if we are living in a fearful or a f uh, fight or flight state our defenses are not uh, capable to cope with uh, something like this and we get sick so yeah I'm trying my best to keep positive and to, to share through the podcast uh, the uh, positivity from uh, from other people because there is this is what I think people should listen to much more than the number of casualties and all those terrible things that they keep on bombarding people yeah. with uh, the news. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you said something else earlier that I really like that during the self-isolation, the quarantine period, people will either turn fat or fit. Yeah. <laughs> I really yeah. like that. <laughs> Between an A or I. <laughs> yeah, depending on what you yeah. Depending on your outlook, I guess. Um, <laughs> it's a choice, really, isn't so it? It's a choice. <laughs> it is a choice. So I've been out on my bike now. I've got my bike back and I'm cycling because um, uh, I don't know whether people know, but at the moment I live in a van. So well, I'm not very mobile now because we have to all be on lockdown. So it's teaching me a very different um, way. So I'm back on my bike to get my groceries and shopping and things like that now. So um and I'm enjoying it or walking, you know, so mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to be more on the, on the A side with, uh, I'm getting, I'm getting fitter. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, but tell us about, since you mentioned that about the van and being off grid and uh, doing this, uh, unique, unique approach to, to live in, uh, why are you doing it and how do you find it so far? Yeah, sure. Okay. So my, um, so it was last August that I, cause my work is very internet. It, uh, was international so I, I was spending uh, two or three weeks away in different countries so it's another harsh lesson for me that I was adding to the to the carbon footprint and which I now I'm aware of with all my flights and stuff like that mm -hmm. but yeah so my work just took me abroad and I and I love I love the travel I love the you know the people that I was connecting with abroad and um, I was learning more about my niche so about the adoption side of it as well uh and then my flatmate said to me but oh, i love what i love about you is the fact that you're you pay half the rent and you're never here and i'm like oh. uh, so it just allowed me to read my situation you shouldn't have said that <laughs> yeah, yeah totally it's not because i made the best cup of tea or you know got the brownies or anything like that it was because i'm never there so i just thought yeah interesting so i just thought you know what 
um, van life had appealed to me, living in a van and having that sort of freedom to move. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to live in a van. Mm -hmm. um, it's only going to be maximum six to 14 days a month, which I can handle. It's like a holiday before I have to go abroad again or, or work abroad. So I did that and I started that in October. And so I did the, the winter and it, I was going to blog about it, but it was, um, it, so I didn't have any heating in my van during the winter or anything like that. And I basically it helped me form a new relationship to the cold because obviously I love the cold, going to cold rivers and things like that, but sleeping in like minus two to sometimes minus six and then going in, into a cold river, woo, you know, to take another level of um, adaptation and <laughs> genesis, if you like. So I got out feeling finally I feel warm, but so that's like another, another sort of thing, but it, enabled me to have a healthier relationship with the warm so I really appreciated the, the hot and the warm the fires and, and things like that mm -hmm. and I definitely respect the cold a lot more than I ever did or I ever have done so it has deepened my relationship with the Wim Hof method and with nature doing that anyway I got caught short with the coronavirus because I was really lovely you know I, I, there's so many coffee shops and um cafes in in Cumbria that I used to just go and do the circuit and just go in say hello to the, to the owners and, and um, have a have something to eat have a coffee and use their internet or mm -hmm. charge up my, my batteries and everything like that but yeah. then obviously <laughs> with lockdown everything so I was like whoa so so the coronavirus is as for me is uh wow I had to really sort of change my whole living um, a I'm in the country uh, for 31 days now a month um, although I haven't been in, you know, it's only been a couple of weeks, but I have got that mindset that I'm not going to be on an aeroplane anytime soon. So it's just me in the van. So I was like mm. looking at the van, which was a, meant to be a temporary holiday and look how fun van life is, is now looking at going, oh my God, this has just got real. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, oh, great. So I've had some really, really lovely friends um, who have supported me. Um, and put me up and sort of um, sort of allowing me sort of the shock of like living in a van now permanently and it's not the best van for space um, so now I'm here um, at my friend's house and we're putting in a solar panel so I'm going to be prepared to go off grid so mm -hmm. now with a battery solar and I'm learning all about the electrics and what I need got a great water filter system coming so I can just get the water from the lakes and, and stuff like that mm. nice uh, I've got gas camping stove as well as electric now so if I do plug into the mains I've got a great electric um, which is super healthy because I've got not many people there I've got a pressure cooker I've got a steamer there's one pot that can do everything it's so it's so nice when I do plug into the mains I actually have a really nice what I've got risotto and things and, and it generally so it I eat well um, in there but off grid is something that I've never done, never experienced, but I'm going to embrace it, um, embrace it. So there's only slight snags. I used to go to laundrettes. I'm not even sure they're open yet, but I'll worry about that later, if you like. I mm -hmm. think during these challenging times, people come together and they, they kind of, um, which is what I really like. So I've had so many people who I didn't expect that that the hand of offer of help they're, they're coming through for me and I'm like oh thank you thank you so so yeah I'm, I'm very much relying on on uh, the continuation of, of mankind to to sort of help me adapt um, in my new way so mm. <laughs> which is no bad thing I mean I I outsourced a lot of my my life you know so I cap cafes coffee shops my bike I went to a local bike thing to pump up the tires like all that's gone now so I'm like Ooh, so how do I pump up my own tires <laughs> I should know what to do so I have to do it so I'm just putting my independence back again something that I just advocated because I always wanted to support local and, and be kind of input my money into the local community and local mm -hmm. businesses so yeah so yeah I think you should definitely blog about this and uh, use the time in nature and uh, type away and uh, because that's, uh, um, who knows, maybe more of us will need to do that at some point if this situation carries on. <laughs> I mean, um, I do love nature anyway and have a fantastic connection, but I've always known that I can go back to society if you like. Um, mm. But this is where I hope to park the van up, it's on private property, so hopefully it'll be fine. Um, there's nothing there. there. There is a bet, um, and there's no signal. I can get signal on top of the hill, or if I cycle, 
half an hour. So <laughs> I'm not sure whether, do you know the, um, the film Cast Away with Will? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've got a cat, I've got a really nice sort of succulent plant. So maybe that might be my Wilson aspect. <laughs> or, or I'll be talking to sheep, that would be the sheep whisperer. Because uh, that's probably the most things I'll see if, uh, if I go off grid. <laughs> it's going to be a fascinating blog. I'm looking forward <laughs> to reading it. <laughs> Talking with the come sheep. back and forget how to, to interact with humans. <laughs> <laughs> or you will uh, come back as an enlightened uh, spiritual uh, human person that uh, has connected with uh, the source of everything. Yeah, totally. Especially your soul is like, Emma, you can come out now. The coronavirus is like, we're able to travel. I'm like, really? Like, <laughs> I might be completely out of tune with uh, what's going on. Probably no bad thing, but people are like, we need to get Emma out of the valley. She's still stuck there. She doesn't know it's mm-hmm. over. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting. But it, it's, um, it's going to be a colourful journey, I would say, <laughs> um, getting back to basics and, you know, I might, mm-hmm. the stuff that I might miss. But I'm not, I could go and cycle in. and um, Yeah, and I have friends that I'm pretty sure I could go and park up in their driveway and just sort of have a hot shower and, and do that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, <laughs> all is not completely off grid. So um, sure, <laughs> sure. But it's making me think what I what I want, you know. So um, I definitely I'm looking at a place in Cumbria to buy, and uh, and for me it's about location. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now more than anything else. So. Mm. Emma, do you meditate? I do. Yeah, I meditate a lot more outside now. Obviously, I don't have much of a choice, um, but. But yeah, I do meditate outside a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, different types of meditation. Um, I'm being more open because lots of people are coming through with their gifts now and sharing. So I sort of like tuning in to different different ways. And I'm I'm really into like root root chakra and uh, because I think right now people's foundations are a little bit rocky. Mm-hmm. And the and the big the big fallouts is because they've got rubbish foundations isn't it so for me it's it's about readdressing that and my connection with nature and doing and doing that so yeah so the meditations i'm listening to are life cycles you know like mm-hmm. even the life cycle of water from the sky comes down into the river goes back up you know so i'm really enjoying being part of that process of the cycle so i think life is about cycle absolutely is mm. yeah, yeah. What the, what does spirituality mean to you, Emma? Um, spirituality, I think. Good question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm being more and more like some people are being more spiritual now. So the Wim Hof method has sort of allowed. It's been that gateway to connect with myself mm. um, and have a new connection outwards. So when I first started. It, it was very, I was quite, um, uh, what do I call it? Selfish, I suppose. We're trying to like, figure out how I tick and what's the, what, where, what place do I have? Yeah. I think, like the more I'm into it, spirituality is more about being open to others and, and being more sort of, a, not a servant, but just sort of helping, helping others because, and I have been afraid, afraid of that because I'm always worried about being judged. Mm-hmm. Nothing like that. But actually, the more I talk, the more I realise I am spiritual. Um, in the sense, I don't have a watch anymore. I don't. I don't even know what I'm going to do two days time and, and things. But but I don't have much <laughs> family either, so I don't need the routine and the structure, which I understand some households do and, and things like that. So I appreciate that that's not that's not my, my way or my chosen. Mm-hmm. So I think for me, spirituality is is I'm um, Wim. Uh, I heard a podcast with Wim. Uh, well, not with Wim, actually, he was talking about Wim. And he was saying about the body and mind connection, that you really need to unite that. And when you unite that, you can change anything. Um, so I think that's my sort of my new kind of focus is really, because Wim uh, in the experiment, uh, body, over, uh, body over mind or mind over body, it's on, online. He thought himself warm. So when the cold wetsuit that he was wearing, um, he he was very he couldn't do any of the Wim Hof because he was stuck in a little tiny cat PET scan or whatever, and he thought himself warm and I, and I just think that's so incredibly powerful, um, and to have that connection 
to think yourself warm and go up one degree uh, as well. So it mm. did even more. Mm. Um, I think that's spirituality in, in the sense that you don't own your body or your mind and you're something more greater than that. Um, and it's really, really nice. I think that's introducing me to collectiveness and the collective awakening that's happening now. Um, that I kind of want, to, I'm ready for the next level of of, um, of being open. And it's something that you can't force. So a bit of patience as well in spirituality. <laughs> I love it. The collective awakening, it's, uh, I so truly agree with you. It's, uh, it's a beautiful way of looking at it. Uh, yeah. It might take a period of uh, disruption and pain and... Uh, difficulties but uh, you can't awaken in a in an easy way i think it's you need to go through some hardship uh, as as humanity thank you for listening to this first part of uh, the interview with emma estrella tune in on the next episode where emma is talking about breathing and uh, she actually does a, a breathwork exercise for for all of us to to enjoy and it's amazing thank you very much for listening please take a moment to subscribe rate and review personal development mastery on apple podcasts if you want to know more about me and how i can help you join my facebook group personal development mastery you can either search for it on facebook or you can simply type bit.ly slash pdm group And until next time, stand out, don't fit in.